For this tutorial, I will be using my one and a half square cutter for measuring. The clay has been run through the thicker setting on the pasta machine. I am using Cernin Metallics, one part rose gold, half part bronze for one of the gradients, then one part silver, one part hematite for the other. The textures are heat wave and curly spirals from Cool Tools, but you can use any other textures, keeping in mind that if you use a liney one and the curly, spirally, even floral one combination, it will give you a stronger visual effect. I will be using the rose petal cutter, but you can use any cutters your imagination tells you will look good. First, you must create your gradients. You can do so using the Skinner Blend method and uh, look for the link in the video description. Once you are happy with your gradient, make sure you have your clay on the thickest setting on the pasta machine and you have obtained the mica shift sheen. Link to the mica shift tutorial in the video description as well. I will use Armorol as a release agent on the clay, then get a good imprint of my texture sheet. It is very important that the blade you use to shave the raised area of the imprint does not have any necks. If in the case of Mokumegane it's okay, when it comes to mica clays, the line left on the clay by a nick in the blade will cause a slight mica shift as well, so it will be very hard to conceal. Shave off the raised areas of your clay. Place the shavings with care so you can reconstitute the gradient from the scraps. It is very important to burnish well the surface. Use wax paper for that purpose. You have to be very careful though when burnishing a mica shift effect because you do not want to shift in place the tiny mica particles on the surface and lose the 3D effect of the texture on clay. What I always suggest is to start sanding with a 400 grit after baking to remove the superficial layer and thus enhance the 3D effect. Once you are happy with the burnishing, place your sheet on the baking tile. Cover with clean wrap with care to not have wrinkles. Use your cutter then remove the clean wrap and cut again. For the earrings I decided to cut in such a way that the lighter part of the gradient will be towards the point of the teardrop. Do the same for the second earrings base. For the top part of the earring, I will be using the spiral texture sheet the same way I did for the base piece. Use 
you can, of course, use other color combinations for your gradients. The best effects are obtained when using different warmth colors for the two pieces as well as different lightness. In this case, I used a cold gray combination with a warm earth tones combination and different styles of textures to enhance the difference even further. When it comes to cutting the shape, you can use a cutter of the same shape but smaller size or you can even use a cutter of a different shape and smaller size. Just play with the cutters to figure out what it will look like. Cover your pieces with wax paper or printing paper and another tile for baking. Bake at manufacturer's recommended temperature for 30 minutes. For the pendant, I will do the exact same thing, only that the gradient will be positioned exactly opposite, with the lighter area towards the base of the teardrop, both for the base piece and for the top one. You only need to do a backing for the base piece. You can use again the mica shift with the texture, but you can also do it like this. Get your clay on a very thin setting, then roll and cut thin rolls with one end light and one end dark. Then shape your rolls together kind of teardroppy. Make sure they're well fused together and cut the whole piece like a fillet in two. Yeah, we are filleting polymer clay. You 
You want the cut part to be on the outside. Rub some bacon bond or liquid clay on the back of the base piece. Then place the backing with care to not trap air. Simply bevel a bit with your roller and just by pressing with the roller on the edge, the raw clay pressed on baked clay will separate. You can use your X-Acto knife for refined trim. Don't worry about burnishing, you'll even things out by sanding. For the pendant, I simply chose the heat wave texture but using the other gradient combination than the front of the piece. Bake again on a tile with the backing on the tile. You'll sand it anyway, so you don't care about shininess. Cover with paper, then another tile and bake for 30 minutes. Once all your pieces are baked, sand starting with 400, then go with 600, 800, 1000, 1200, 1500 and 2000 grits. Buff. I will not recommend varnishing or resining because the top piece moves on the base piece sideways and varnish or glaze might get sticky in humid weather and resin will make the two pieces too thick. To put these together you can use two variants, the pinch bail or the large jump ring. I will use pinch bails for the earrings and the large jump ring for the pendant to show you both. You want first to drill holes in your pieces.
make sure to align the bottom and the top piece at the top so that the holes will be in the proper spot. Make the holes just a bit larger by using gradually larger drills so that the pieces can dangle freely sideways. If you want your earrings to be longer, you can insert a bead between the ear wire and the earring itself. This pendant looks best if worn on a metal choker. And there you have a beautiful mica shift gradient jewelry set. Happy claying!